Hi, my name's Jack, and today we're going to be doing a grisaille portrait. First thing first, what is grisaille? Grisaille essentially comes from the term, the French term grey. So we're going to be using a very muted grey or dead palette. Uh, so that's going to be white, ivory black, and we're going to use some raw umber. Now, some people may say that to be a sort of true grisaille, it's just white and black, and that using the umber makes it more of a sort of brunei, um, because you end up with that sort of warmer and cooler variation within your mixtures. But personally, it gives a little bit more life to the, to the painting, so I would prefer to do that. <laughs> so why paint a grisaille? So often, the difficulties one gets into whilst painting with a full palette or even a limited palette is almost battling between the idea of colour and tone. And so by removing the idea of colour, we can focus purely on tone, where it becomes an almost sort of direct um, transition from, from our drawing. It also works as a fantastic underpainting, as well as creating beautiful paintings in itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay in the painting directly from the model. What you can also do is have a drawing, transfer the drawing and paint then in grisaille. But what we're going to do is go straight on with the paint onto the canvas. So terms you might hear people talk about when they're talking about their palette and organizing their palette is open and closed palette. Now an open palette is essentially where you just have the pure, the pure paint straight from the tube and you mix as you go. That's essentially what an open palette is. A closed palette is where you have these pre-mixed and you work from your pre-mix a lot more sort of rigorously. Whilst the closed palette is where you'll have a couple of pre-mixed. There isn't really a specific amount of pre-mixing one needs to do or, or not. Some people find it more helpful to have more and will do multiple strings of seven, nine tones, including warms and cools. Whilst I would like to start off with three, because I find to make sure that I keep the painting simple in the early stages and help grouping those larger pools of light and dark together, that having a slightly simpler palette, so a sort of semi-open palette or a semi-closed palette, just aids me in keeping a nice, simple, easy start. But there isn't a right or wrong way to go about that. It is very much down to you. What I would say is often you'll find that working with an open palette as a beginner can become a bit messy. So potentially start off with at least a couple of pre-mixes just to aid you on your way. So I just want to mix a mid-tone light so, let's make sure I get, and this way I can go lighter to get those highlights, but it also gives me room to go darker for those half tones and those transitions into shadow. And then let's get a sort of mid-tone for our darks as well. And then I'm going to do one for essentially the darker elements of that shadow. So I'm just going to use these two colors for that. A little bit lighter here. And I'm just going to start off with these three. What you could do is mix a couple of mid-tones if you wanted, including a highlight tone. But for me, I'm going to start off with these, with these three. And I think as I start laying in, hopefully it becomes sort of clear as to why, for me, it works keeping it nice and simple early on. 
because we're going to be doing this over a relatively short period of time, I'm going to be using basically just a little bit of linseed oil as my medium to help the flow of the paint. And I've got a tiny bit of terps there, which I will use very sparingly just to fill the canvas nice and early and maybe to help charge my brush at the beginning to, uh, to help the paint flow off it. 